With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired, for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy, and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? The Phantom Panther, we call this. California and I were at the end of a long day's trek through the Mesa country on our way home to the Bar 20. We were thinking about setting up our overnight camp when I saw something I didn't like. California, hold it. What's the matter, Hoppy? Uh, oh, yeah. Man by that rock holding a rifle. Let's go up easy. Howdy, stranger. Howdy. Howdy. He looked friendly enough. He does now. But he was holding that rifle as if he was ready to use it. Evening, mister. Evening. Won't you get down and sit a while? My name's Purvis. Folks hereabouts mostly calls me Pop. <laughs> I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is California Carlson, my partner. Hopalong Cassidy. Sure pleased to meet up with you. Howdy, Carlson. Howdy. Excuse me uh, mentioning it, Mr. Purvis, but you seem to be keeping a sharp eye on all those steers out there. Yeah. And it may sound loco to you, gents, but I'm watching for something that can't be seen. Huh? Ah, sure does sound loco. Uh, wait, California. Mr. Purvis, I don't mean to be too curious, but maybe you'd like to tell us uh, what's bothering you about those critters out there. Sure. Sure, I'll tell you. Practically every night for four weeks, something's been killing off them steers. And them as ain't killed, they're getting skinny and off their feed from being stampeded. Steers killed and stampeded. What's causing this, Purvis? A panther. A panther? Well, one bullet from that 30-30 you got there should stop any panther I ever saw. Yeah, any you ever saw. But no one has ever seen this varmint. This here's a, a phantom panther, Cassidy. A phantom, you hear? He's a ghost cat. A phantom panther. A killer. I tell you, in four weeks, I've lost 40 calves and a dozen prime yearlings. Well, when it first began, I got together the local ranchers, and we watched and we hunted for that cat, but he can't be seen. He can't be seen, and he can't be killed. But why are you out here watching over yourself tonight, Purvis? Oh, nobody will help no more. Folks say it's no use hunting a ghost. Fact is, they're all just plain scared. And she has gotten to the idea of hunting a ghost, Panther, myself. So all your neighbors have given up. Just about. We're holding another meeting tomorrow morning at the bank over at Broken Era. Don't know what good it'll do. Well, go anyway, Purvis. California and I'll show up, too. Right now, you get on home for a good night's sleep. We'll stay here and watch your herd tonight. Well, now, that's right friendly. And I sure do thank you. And you'll be at the bank tomorrow? You can count on us. Then good night to you. Gee, Josephat, if I don't think maybe we'll get that panther yet. We'll try, Purvis. Good night. Good night. Er, uh, what's your figure, Hoppy? I don't figure yet, California. I was thinking. A phantom panther. Hmm. What in blazes was that? A panther, California. Let's get him. Circle left. I'll cover this side. Cows are blocking this, but I'll try to you up. Them cows sure were fidgety. That panther scared them all right, but uh, looks like we missed him. But he didn't miss California. Look here. That calf? Uh, dead. Killed by the phantom panther. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Phantom Panther. Hoppy and California have met Pop Purvis, a rancher whose steers are being killed and stampeded by a phantom panther. While Hoppy and California are standing watch, 
the panther strikes again and leaves a clawed and dead calf. Now, the next morning, Hoppy and California enter the Broken Arrow Bank for a meeting of the local ranchers about the problem of the Phantom Panther. This looks like the place, California. Hop along, Cassidy. Sure glad to see you. Shake hands with Bart Lomas here. He's our banker. And this here's Stan Dixon. Has the valley spread next to my range. Hi, Loomis. Dixon. How do you do? This is my partner, California Carlson. Hi, Dixon. California. Howdy, Howdy Jim. Uh, Purvis, I got bad news. One of your calves got clawed to death last night. Couldn't get to it quick enough to see what did it. Again. That panther. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear it. And frankly, I'm worried. I certainly don't want that cat getting down the valley to my herds. Now, this is serious. Mighty serious. In a few months, we'll be driving cattle over the trail to market. At this rate, you're not going to have much to drive, Pop. Oh, I know it better than anybody, Bart. With my daughter Jane marrying up with a Gleason boy from over the valley for winter, I want to pay off that mortgage you're holding and give them a good start with a paying ranch and healthy stock on it. This way, all they look to get is a dern fine water hole on dern good rangeland and not a standing critter on it all. Well, uh, when I give you that mortgage, I didn't expect anything like this to happen, but uh, uh, well, we better get on with the meeting. Everybody's in the next room here. Uh, let's go, then. Come along, California. Trouble. Here we come. So what I say is, setting up a watch for that panther won't get us anywhere, Pop. You said yourself he strikes in one place one night... And a couple of miles away the next. But, Ben, if enough of us was to circle the herd, he'd have to cross the line somewheres to get at the steers. Stands to reason. Ain't no reason to that panther. He can just drop out of the air into the middle of the herd. You're talking crazy. He does it every time. Uh, that's right. I'm sure he does. Cassidy. Cassidy, you just come on to this thing. Can you make any sense of it? Yeah, tell us what you saw last night, Cassidy. That is, if and you saw anything. I saw a dead calf with his throat torn out. Sure, we all seen porpoises that cred us, but nobody's ever seen that phantom panther. Yeah, that's right. Uh, maybe nobody's seen it yet. To me, that's no reason why everyone should sit back and see Pop Purvis ruined. Uh, Mr. Cassidy, I, uh, I don't think you understand the, uh, the overall situation here. As you may know, this is all new range country. Fact is, Purvis and I moved out here about the same time two years ago it was. And the spread Pop Purvis took up has, uh, it seems, certain uh, disadvantages. A good water hole and plenty of grass range don't spell out disadvantages to me, Dixon. I'll tell you what Dixon's been polite about saying, Cassidy. That mesa land where my rain sets once was some kind of Indian holy ground. Their old medicine men did their hocus-pocus up there. Bad medicine it was, supposed to drive out their enemies. Now... What folks around here are all thinking is that the panther that's killing my stock ain't a real varmint, but a spirit. The engine, bad medicine, spook critter. You mean to say all these men believe that granny talk? You ain't heard it all yet, Cassidy. The night we all watched, why, 12 of us was riding that range, that cat clawed two critters dead. 12 of us was there, and we didn't see it. No. But just last night you was there yourself, Cassidy, and you didn't see nothing. Here, yeah, how about here? Well, well I say you are, Mr. Cassidy. Now, maybe you understand the situation better. Maybe I do understand, Dixon. At least I understand there are a lot of scared hombres in this room. And just what do you propose to do about it, Cassidy? Just this. Phantom or not, I'm going to get that panther. <laughs> Uh, it'll be dark tonight. No moon. If we keep moving around the herd, one of us might cross the track of that cat. Just let me sight it once. That's all I crave. Say, uh, Pop, uh, how come you ain't moved your cows off in this rain? Seems like you're just inviting that panther to get at them. Only place they can get enough water. The three adjoining ranches got barely enough for their own herds. But I won't have no problems once I sight that panther. Well, maybe it'll be soon, Purvis. Right now, we'd better get set to watch. Suppose you swing around to the left. We'll go the other way. Suits me. I'll look for you later. The other side of the mesa. Right. Let's go, California. You know, Hoppy, it ain't exactly my idea of fun, this uh, hunting an invisible wildcat. <laughs> 
You don't mean you believe in spooks, California. Well, uh, well, uh, <laughs> Hoppy, I once come on a fellow who showed me a hole in the ground he dug. Mm-hmm. He claimed it was the deepest well in the territory. Well, maybe it was and maybe it wasn't. I didn't tell that fellow I believed him, and I didn't say I thought he was a liar. <laughs> on the other hand, I didn't go jump down that well hole to find out if he was right or wrong. Same with spooks and spirits. If I leave them alone, I never have to decide whether I believe in them or not. <laughs> Well, this panther is one spook we're not going to leave alone. I wish we was back in the bar 20 right now. Hold it, California. It's across the range, the way Purvis went. Come on! Ain't been no shot. Reckon Pop didn't see the panther. Those cars are moving. Let's get them milling on the circle. They're stampeding, Hoppy. I can't swing them. Hell them into that gulch. The cliff wall will stop them. Wildest ride I ever took since I tried riding a range buffalo. Yeah, luck was with us. If we hadn't been able to make the leaders veer off, the whole herd would have gone over that bluff. Say, I wonder where Pop Purvis was doing all the commotion. Uh, he was on the wrong side of the herd to help any. Yeah, probably waiting for us now. California. Look there. Pop's horse. Huh? Yeah, it... And the saddle's empty. There's Purvis on the ground. Let's get down and take a look. He's dead. Poor old Pop. Trampled to death by his own cows. No, California. Look at his throat. Ripped open. The panther killed Purvis. Uh, Pop said all he craved was a sight of that panther. Well, he got it. I wonder if he did see anything. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Phantom Panther. I just want you to know, Miss Jane, that California and I are staying and seeing this thing through. I'm grateful to you, Mr. Cassidy, but what reason is there for going on now? The same reason your father had. He built up this ranch for you, and trying to protect it, he died. Yes. And Hoppy and me, we'll just take over from where he left off. But I can't let you two risk your lives for me like that. Let that be our lookout, Miss Jane. Well, you seem to have callers, Miss Jane. Come in. Oh, hi. Hi. Mr. Loomis, Mr. Dixon, Clark and Ben. It's most kind of you to call at this time. Not at all, Miss Jane, not at all. Personally, I want to say that uh, as your neighbor and friend, I hope... You know you can count on me for anything. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Miss Jane, I don't guess I have to tell you how every one of us feels for you on account of old Pop. I, I mean your pa. And a lot of the women folk will be coming over soon to do what they can, Miss Jane. You're almost kind. Uh, there's something else, Miss Jane. Maybe this ain't exactly the right time to bring it up, but all the men feel it's kind of important you hear it right off while they... Well, uh, hop along, cats, you can hear it, too. You can talk to me any time, Loomis. You know that. Please say whatever it is, Mr. Loomis, if it's so important. Yes, sir, Miss Jane. Uh, 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 well, uh, your pa lost uh, a lot of cattle to that phantom, uh, uh, panther. But we say, leave it alone before anybody else gets killed. You'd see this killer go loose? This ain't no ordinary cat, Cassidy. I seen plenty of Indian medicine in my time, and I tell you, nobody will ever see this cat. And nobody will ever kill him. Well, there's something in what Clark says, Cassidy. Lots of things just can't be explained or understood. Suppose you explain just where this idea of yours leaves Miss uh, Jane Purvis. Yes, I'd like to hear that part of it, Mr. Loomis. Well, it's uh, it's up to you, Miss Jane, of course. But maybe you ought to sell out your herd now. At least you'd get some cash that way. Ten cents on the dollar. Would that be enough to keep you from foreclosing the mortgage on her range land, Loomis? Well, if business is business. Nobody would take it at any price. Not till that phantom panther gets himself back to where he come from. And that might be never. Well, uh, I wouldn't go so far, Clark. 
Now, uh, as a neighborly gesture to give Miss Jane some uh, further financial assistance, I personally would be glad to take an, an option on this range. Of course, if Miss Jane should decide to return, why, um, uh, the papers can easily be torn up. I guess that about covers everything. Or have you men got uh, more ideas? Now, look here, Cassidy. We're doing this to save trouble and maybe save lives. So you'd best stay out of this till you're asked into it. Well, I'm asking Mr. Cassidy into it because I'm staying on this range. That's what Dad would have wanted, and, and that's what I'm going to do. Yippee! What a gal. I think you've got your answer, gentlemen. Yeah, whatever you say, Miss Jane. And, Cassidy, I still say this to you. If you want to go on risking your skin hunting that phantom panther, well, just go ahead. I intend to. Tonight and every night until I get that killer. Or, Mr. Cassidy, until it gets you. Just too many cows here for just the two of us to watch, Hoppy. Ah, uh, we got only one thing to watch for, California. The panther. Yeah, and uh, where's he going to strike from this time? Well, there's a breeze tonight, and a panther would approach from downwind so the cows wouldn't get his scent. Let's ease over there between the herd and that gorge. Ah, uh, this is about the right place. We're downwind of the herd here. Quiet now. Cows are getting restless, Hoppy. Uh, maybe uh, something's among them and... Uh... They may smell something. Keep watching. Hoppy. Hoppy, I don't like it. Them cows is... Listen. He's in there among them. We gotta break into that herd. We can't do it, Hoppy. They're coming right at us. Hold it. Quick, fire some shots. That may turn them. Too late, Hoppy. They're stampeding. And they're moving this way, fast. Hoppy, we can't stop them. And we can't get out of this gorge. They'll smash us again the cliff. Head for that cliff in the rocks, California. And ride. Ride for your life. Yep, Miss Jane, Hoppy and me have had plenty of narrow escapes, but last night were only a little narrow crack in the cliff saves us from being trampled. More ham, Mr. Carlson? Uh, well, uh, I've already... Uh, yeah, don't mind if I do, thank you. I'm beginning to believe that panther is everything they say. Besides stampeding the herd, he killed two more yearlings last night. I'm beginning to believe we've been wrong, wasting our time. I'm glad you think so, Mr. Cassidy, because I don't want you men to go on with it. The ranch and all the stock aren't worth any risk of lives. Ah, uh, it's a nice spread, though. In fact, I'd like to look it over. Mind if we do some exploring today, Miss Jane? Well, you're welcome to, of course. And you won't hunt the panther any longer? We won't, Miss Jane. Well, just a minute, Hoppy. You really mean we're finished watching for that spook cat? That's right. Because I've got a hunch that tonight that panther will be finished. <laughs> Well, Cassidy, Miss Jane tells us you wanted a final get-together. So here we are, and we hope it is final. All right, then. First of all, this morning, California and I did a little exploring on this range. We found three caves. Caves? What's this all about, Cassidy? If that panther's a real live animal, he's got to hole up in one or another of those caves. Now, I've, I've drawn a map. You all can see where I marked the caves. There's one... And two, and three. Hmm. Very uh, interesting, Mr. Cassidy. Now, just uh, what do you propose? I want two men to cover each cave. If we don't find the panther, I'll agree it's a phantom and give up. And so we'll all be satisfied with whatever happens. Let's only use men who haven't openly opposed me on this panther business. Well, uh, that lets out me, Dixon... Clark, Ben, and let's see, uh, Bolton, too. Uh, let's all understand this now, Cassidy. If no one sees the panther, but he still strikes tonight, you feel that it'll be useless to make any further attempts to stop him? That's the idea, Dixon. Oh, he'll strike all right. Ain't no use trying to trap that phantom. 
But if this thing will finally convince everybody, I'm all for it. Hoppy, <clears throat> I still don't see why you didn't tell me about this fourth cave at the meeting. Because, California, I didn't want anyone to know we were going to cover it. You see, this fourth cave was the only one that showed signs of anything having been in it. You mean uh, panther signs? Well, at least not signs of any kind of panther I ever ran across before. Mm, I wish it weren't so dark. I... <laughs> yeah, it'll be darker in the cave. Now, here we are. Be quiet and be careful. Don't worry. I ain't aiming to invite no attention to myself. <laughs> Can you make out anything, Hoppy? Eyes aren't used to the dark yet. Easy now. There's a bell in the cave back here. I'm right behind you. Wait, California. Hear that? Yeah. Come on. Don't talk. Above your hobby. Look out! Watch out, Callum! Oh. Oh. Where are you, Hoppy? Oh! What in the... uh, uh, It's getting away! Ain't sure I got him, Hoppy? Hoppy, I. Uh... Hoppy! Hoppy, you all right? Uh... Hoppy! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, Cassidy, what happened to you last night was all your own doing. You're lucky that panther just knocked your head again a rock. Now, suppose you'd had Jim uh, Purvis call this meeting to tell us you're finally all through. Yeah, we're through. And so is the Phantom Panther. And I reckon his dead carcass is invisible just like he was. Yeah, I, guess so. I didn't say he was dead yet. As for the carcass, I'll point it out to you when I'm ready. Well, what are you talking about? Please, everybody, let Mr. Cassidy explain. Thank you, Miss Jane. When I examined that fourth cave yesterday, I saw marks on a smooth, flat ledge. Marks where something, maybe claws, had been sharpened. Something had been using that cave. And unless the panther was a ghost, it had to have a hideout. I figured that cave was it. That don't mean nothing. It meant plenty. I noticed another thing. Each time any cows were killed and the herd stampeded, the panther's cry came right from the middle of the herd. Any wild animal who caused a commotion among the cattle as soon as they smelled it. That convinced me the phantom panther had to be a man. A man? What, mean, what, what man could be such a low-down varmint? The man whose ranch really had disadvantages. Not enough range and water. That man played on the old Indian bad medicine legend to ruin Pop Purvis by making it seem a ghost panther was killing and stampeding his stock. Boy, what do you mean? Day before yesterday, he thought he finally had scared everyone off, including Jane Purvis, and so offered an option to buy a ranch cheap. He'd never have torn up that option like he pretended he would. Yes... Dixon there is the Phantom Panther. This is ridiculous. Hurt, everybody! Cassidy, you made a serious charge here. But so far, it's all talk. You ain't proved a thing. Last night, California fired two shots in that cave, and we found traces of blood. Never miss at that range. Take off Dixon's shirt, and you'll find bullet wounds. I, I won't stand for this, I tell you. Then how about this, Dixon? You dropped that when you attacked me in the cave last night. A glove with sharp steel claws riveted to it. The panther's claws. You want to try the glove on and see how it fits Dixon? Hey, 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 the door. There he goes for the window. Stand still, everybody. I'll shoot the first man who moves. Your game's up, Dixon. You might as well give in and take what's coming to you. Is that so? Well, first, Mr. Hopalong Cassidy, you take what's coming to you. Is he going to shoot? <laughs> Nice shooting, California. You picked his gun right out of his hand. Sure. I didn't want to hurt him uh, much. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen and Miss Jane, California and I'll leave you to deal in your own way with the 
Phantom Panther. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, I don't know how I can ever thank you. Miss Jane, when you're ready to marry that Gleason boy, suppose you just invite California and me to the wedding. Of course I will. And will you really come? Oh, sure, sure. I just love weddings, so long as they don't happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Even a ghost panther on the prowl hasn't a ghost of a chance once Hoppy makes up his mind to track him down. So Hoppy puts an end to the old Indian legend of the Phantom Panther. In next week's thrilling episode, Hoppy and California take a few days off from the Bar 20 for just a friendly visit to the Wilson Ranch, but their social call turns into an action-packed experience when Hoppy plays a hunch. <laughs> Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Phantom Panther was written by Paul Adams, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based on the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. (laughs) ¶¶